Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice, and this video is an example of a two battery circuit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and solve this, um, but I want you to get two ideas from this. So first, setting up Kirchhoff's equations. And then second, using algebra to solve them. Okay, so let's say that we have this circuit right here. Um, I want you to take a minute and copy down this circuit. The first question is, what Kirchhoff's Law equations can we set up just by looking at this circuit? Okay, so when we talk about Kirchhoff's Law, we need to think about both the loop rule, so sigma v loop equals zero, and the junction rule, sigma i in equals sigma i out. Okay, and when it's when you're doing this, it's really useful to label currents. So we know that the current is going to be all the way to the same until you get to a juncture. So we're going to have three different currents here. I1, I2, and I3. Okay. We don't know exactly which way our current is flowing, but we can take a guess. And when you go ahead and you label currents, you always want to take a guess. So I'm going to take a guess that I1 is flowing this way, I2 is flowing this way, and I3 is flowing this way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I want, because I want to solve for these three currents, I want to have at least three equations so that I can have three unknowns and I can solve with the algebra. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Kirchhoff's junction rule because it's just easier to use. Okay, so I know that at this blue junction that I just drew, I have I1 plus I2 equals I3, okay, because I1 and I2 are going into the junction, I3 is leaving it. In the loop rule, I have to choose a loop that I'm going around. So I'll do a red loop. Let's say I start at my 5 volt battery, and I'm going to go all the way around here. Okay, so going around that red loop, starting at my battery, I gain 5 volts from my battery, then I have to subtract off, so minus IR, so minus I1 times 2, and then the next thing I get to is this 10 ohm resistor, so minus I3 times 10, and I set that equal to 0. Okay. I can also do this smaller loop, so starting at my 4 volt battery, I'm going to go through my resistor, through my other resistor, and come back to my 4 volt battery. So the green loop that I'm drawing right here, I start by gaining 4 volts with that battery, minus 3I2, okay, and the reason I'm doing the resistance times I is that I know that V is equal to I R, and when you go across a resistor, you lose voltage. So that's why I'm subtracting. Um, minus 3 I2, then I come to the 10 ohm resistor, so minus 10 I3, and I set that equal to zero. Okay. So now I have my three equations, right? I have equations 1, 2, 
and 3, and I have three unknowns, so I can solve for each one of my currents. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fact that I3 equals I1 plus I2, and I'm going to put them in for I3. So I'm going to put them in right here and right here. I'm going to get rid of those arrows just so they don't take up space. And I'll rewrite my equation. So I have 5 minus I2, or 2I2, two so, sorry, one more time, 2I1 minus, and remember I3 is I1 plus I2 times 10. And that is equal to 0. Now I want to simplify that. So I have 5, okay, minus, I have negative 2i1 minus 10i1, so that's minus 12i1, and then minus 10i2 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for my third equation. I'm going to take I1 plus I2 and put it in for I3. So I have 4 minus 3I2 minus 10 I1 plus I2 equals 0. And that will go ahead and become 4 minus 13I2 minus 10I1 equals 0. So what I've gone ahead and done is I have reduced my number of unknowns. So right now I'm going to circle these two equations that I ended up with. And now I only have I1 and I2 to deal with. And so I'm going to go ahead and solve for one of my variables in one of them. Okay, I'll call this actually not equation 3 because I already have equation 3. This is equation 4 and this is equation 5 and I'm going to rewrite them on the next page. Okay, so I'm left with these two equations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for <clears throat> I1 in terms of I2. So I'm going to take this equation right here and solve for I1. And I'm not going to walk you through every little bit of the algebra, but hopefully you can prove to yourself that when you solve for I1, you get I1 equals 1 twelfth times 5 minus 10 I2. Okay, and I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to put it into I1 down here. So I, now what I have is 4 minus 13 I2 minus 10 times 1 twelfth times 5 minus 10 I2 equals 0. Okay, and so now we look at this one equation, and we only have one unknown. We have I2 and another I2, but it's the same variable. Okay, so we have to do a little bit of math. Um, 4 minus 13 I2, um, 10 divided by 1 twelfth times 5 is 4.17. So I have minus 4.17. And then I have two negatives, so I have plus 10 times 10 divided by 12, which is 8.33i2 equals 0. Now I collect my like terms, and I get 0.17 equals 4.67i2. I divide both sides. And I come up with a real number for I2. And I get I2 
equals negative 0 0.036 amps. Okay, now I have a number for I2. I can go ahead and put that in here, and I can calculate I1. I know I1 is equal to 1 12th times 5 minus 10 times I2, so that's minus 10 times negative 0 0.036. And when we put that in a calculator, and so you get 5.03 amps. Sorry, that was a mistake. You don't get 5.03. You get 0.45 amps. Okay, and then we know that I3 is just I1 plus I2. So for I3, we get negative 0.036 plus 0.45 and we get I3 is equal to 0.414 amps.